नमस्ते एवरीवन वी विल बिगिन विद एनी क्लैरिफिकेशंस एनी क्वेश्चंस एनी डाउट्स एनीबॉडी हैज नमस्कार सर मैं खुशबू जर्मनी से uh, मुझे और समझना है कि सोल पर्सपेक्टिव से सब परिस्थिति और व्यक्ति को कैसे देखे इट्स वेरी सिंपल व्हाटएवर इज हैपनिंग जस्ट एक्सेप्ट एज अ ड्रामा व्हाटएवर इज हैपनिंग जस्ट एक्सेप्ट इट एज अ ड्रामा एंड प्ले द ड्रामा वेल एक्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू द करंट सिचुएशन एंड see what are the lessons you can learn from that because there is no reality here we all come from the higher worlds our home is there so we have come here to play certain drama we come through the drama we learn lessons we come here to do our dharma playing the drama means do your dharma in that see there are many events in our life there are many situations in our life so in that how do you deal with the situation that's where dharma comes in okay for example uh, if you had a fight with your husband so in that moment what to do know that this husband wife relationship is a drama and there is a fight so then you say it's okay fine it's not your fault it's not my fault so let us meditate for some time so after you meditate then you realize that oh okay so the soul is come for this experience then after meditation you will realize that okay you be yourself i'll be myself let us enjoy the drama so you diffuse the tension so when you diffuse the tension you are able to live the drama perfectly well similarly in the workplace in your workplace somebody is troubling so then you see that okay this is a drama so how do i handle that trouble so instead of reacting to that i will respond to it because it's a game it's a drama so i will also play my game so at any given point of time you making yourself comfortable that is the most important part. at any given point of time you make yourself comfortable and use your spiritual scientific spiritual temper to see what is the best course of action the best course of action is not reaction but respond see one thing you have to understand is whatever happens happens for good without your soul planning for it you won't be in that situation so accept that situation that your your higher self has planned to learn something so make your make yourself comfortable in every situation that is seen from the soul perspective you making yourself comfortable in any given situation means you are seeing life from a soul perspective emotions are there dramas are there as shakespeare said we struck and fume we struck we fume do our part and do so don't get stuck there you are allowed to fume you are allowed to express all your emotions do your part and do part don't hold on to it the next moment is a new moment don't hold on to the past past is past the more you do meditation the more naturally you will be in the responding mode without meditation whatever is the theoretical understanding you have theoretically you will understand while writing the notes you will feel you will feel yes correct i have learnt it that aha moment comes and everything but in the action you forget when it comes to the battlefield you forget when i say battlefield that means the challenging moments so when challenging moments comes in your life you forget i have one question uh suppose we have a thought okay and we have been meditating regularly our awareness has increased and uh, we have a thought not negative but not great so and within a few moments we also catch that the thought was not right and we tell ourselves no it this is this is not right so does the thought get materialized if we uh, if we are aware of the same within some time itself if you don't give energy to the thought it doesn't gets materialized you negate your thoughts if some some thoughts are disastrous some thoughts are negative you negate it you don't give attention to the thought you don't focus on it you don't think about it so when you remove the focus away from the thought then you don't give energy to that thought if you are constantly thinking about it again and again then you are giving energy okay. so put it aside put it aside replace it with a positive thought think good things do good things speak good things so when you are thinking good things when you are speaking good things when you are doing good things so you are not giving energy to the bad thoughts so the bad thoughts will come as in the periphery and it will disappear see mind exists only in the past and in the future mind cannot exist in the present in the present only your awareness exists so try to be in the present moment all the time don't be worried about the negative thoughts just negate it focus on positive thoughts 
how do you focus on positive thoughts read good books when you read good books then you are in a positive space when you are in the service you are in the positive space when you are in the nature you are in the positive space when you listen to nice music you are in the positive space so don't be too much worried about any negative thought switch your attention to positive things always the thumb rule is you want to overcome any negative don't focus on the negative rather focus on positive go beyond it is like you know in meditation you want to reduce the thoughts everybody meditate so that the, they have less thoughts so that the mind is peaceful the very purpose of meditation is to empty the mind so when you focus on the thoughts then you cannot empty it so rather you focus on the breath so breath is something about the thoughts so when you focus on the breath the thoughts naturally reduce similarly you want to let go of the negative for example you have a, a smoking habit or a drinking habit so how do you let go of that habit you keep on fighting with that oh i need to quit smoking i need to quit smoking the more you want to quit it the more you will do it the more forcefully you do something the more it will bounce back so instead of focusing your thoughts on quitting smoking make friendship with the people who don't have the smoking habit so your focus is on not on the smoking things you are focusing on making friendship with the people who don't have a smoking habit because if you make friends with people who have a smoking habit then naturally every now and then they'll call you to come for a smoke join you for a smoke but if you make friendships with the people who don't have a smoking habit then naturally you get that qualities it's very simple focus on the positivity don't focus on the negative the okay. formula is where your attention goes you have to understand this write down where your attention goes there your energy goes where your attention goes there your energy goes and when your energy goes there it will manifest when you put energy it will manifest so don't put the attention there where your attention goes there your energy goes take off that energy put your attention in the right place so naturally that's why we tell the people the more you do meditation the more naturally all the bad habits leave you mm-hmm. why because you are putting the energy you are not thinking about bad habits the bad habits will naturally leave you because your attention is towards your inner journey your attention is towards going within so all the bad habits goes away because they don't have energy where your attention goes there the energy goes so the moment you catch hold of yourself that you are having any negative thought just ignore it put your attention in the right space okay. sir i have one more question can i ask now i understand it everything is needed it samsara but i do get confused of how to deal with it no matter how different you ask the question the answer is going to be the same <laughs> that is the nature of the mind the nature of the mind is to create confusion so whenever you get confused so that is the time you close your eyes and meditate or you that is why the sangha is very important spiritual sangha see in my journey sometimes in my uh, spiritual journey also i do have certain times where i have this kind of question am i doing the right thing what am i doing i am traveling around the world and i'm teaching meditation and whoever i teach meditation they open their third eye and they do astral travel and i don't have any third eye and astral travel experiences and whatever i say they believe it and they they carry on in their life am i a fake am i real or am i a fake guru because i don't have my these experiences myself so who do i go and share with all those things and sometimes you know the star beings will come and then the astral monsters will come they will come and they, they say this is your past life they will come on their own and they will say this is your past life and we are activating certain dna codes and these and that blah 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 and then they'll go and uh, i believe that that is true and i go on teaching so who do i ask this then again the mind creates confusion is it true are you are you cheating yourself what kind of life you are leading you know you are not leading the normal life like the rest of the people because majority of the people on the planet earth don't live like this so the mind creates confusion you know instead of you being a software engineer you know working in australia you quit everything and you are just traveling here and there in the name of inspiring people so mind creates these questions then one day i asked patriji like you no know, i have something to because 
you know, he, when he comes overseas, we have a very private time one to one. In India, it's quite, he's quite busy, and I used to organize a lot of conferences and retreats overseas. So he comes and we have a a good quality time. So one day I asked. So this is the question I have. Am I real or fake? I want to know because my mind is question. So he said we both are on the same boat. <laughs> my situation is also like yours. What to do? I also never had any experiences. Thirty thirty five years ago, there was one lady who came. We were traveling in a mini uh, mini bus. Ten or ten fifteen people were traveling. So one lady was sitting in the front, and she came to the back seat, and she said, "Sir." I meditated. I opened my third eye, and I saw your past life. <laughs> and your past life is on. So I don't have third eye, and she had third eye, and she has to come and tell. Me. And she told me, and when she told, I have to accept. So I started accepting, and I started believing. So we are on the same boat. I also don't have any experience. I teach meditation, and people share their experiences, and I listen with wonder to those experiences. Right? But have you have? great impact when you speak sir i mean and i know everyone has told you this but there's something about you when you're there it the guru thing is aside you know your energy itself you have a fantastic impact when you're saying something there is somehow a 100% clarity absolute clarity of what you speak it's just to the point always i've noticed i've heard so many of your youtube sessions you know when i heard you speak in the retreat as well i mean you have been instrumental for my change after the retreat i would say that the credit i understand the credit goes to myself but the inspiration is from you you know it's you have an impact i have one last question sir quickly i am going to ask Thank i have you. no i haven't completed the previous one sorry 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 <laughs> so you have to understand that this is the nature of the mind point number 1 and point number 2 now and then it is quite natural to go up and down right so that is where it is very important to read the books reading the books constantly keeps your uh, awareness to the high degree meditation and reading books keeps your awareness to the high degree when your awareness is high you will not get this kind of doubts but once in a while you get this doubts then you brush it aside easily because the weightage to this doubts is very less okay so there is one more statement uh, which he said this is written in the bible okay he quoted this example great are the people great are the people this is the quote from jesus christ in bible great are the people who see the miracles i do and have faith in me greatest are the people who don't see any miracles and still have faith so faith is very very important faith moves mountains you have to have absolute faith in yourself faith in yourself is very important faith in the process you are going and again the benchmark is are you happy in life or that is the benchmark you are happy generally overall you are happy compared to two months ago compared to six months ago you are happy that means you are in the positive direction your happiness is an indication that you are traveling in the right direction so keep that as a benchmark as long as sometimes you may not be uh, happy happy laughing and cracking jokes but you are happy that you have learned some lesson you have gone through a difficult financial situation and that you there is a certain soul learning. so that gives you a soul happiness outwardly you are not jumping and smiling but inwardly there is a certain happiness there is a contentment that yes it is worth that i have gone through this challenge i learned this lesson so as long as you are happy go forward go forward because life is not like you know you cannot predict this is uncertainty law of uncertainty you cannot predict what's going to happen the next moment right so when you go to the when you go back to the higher worlds you will understand the bigger picture but while you are here sometimes you don't understand why this is happening am i in the right direction so these kind of questions comes it is very natural it is very very natural this kind of uh, self doubt comes so that's where it is very important that you read books and also you listen you participate in the sajjana sangha thing that's why buddha said the sangha is important the sangha is important not only for the students the sangha is important for the teacher also see the other day when uh, when this lady was uh, explaining her experiments uh, anahaji 
anaga so when uh, so when that lady was explaining her experiments i was feeling so happy because those experiments i did in my past right but to hear that from the other person i felt yes i am in the right direction when i heard her i said you made my day because i know that i am doing the right so that's why the sangha is very very important when you keep listening to others experiences that motivates you so sangha is very important okay doubts are natural but how do you overcome that every day meditation every day reading books and be in the sangha have positive friendships have spiritual friendships listen from others experiences these three things you do you will always be happy in your life no matter whatever the challenges you will be happy in the life this is the mantra last question sir i have pets at home and uh, this is a confusion you could say i've been facing for a long time uh, so i for those pets i at least for my cat i am required to get the cat food because the cat does not eat anything uh i understand it's it's not uh, it's not right killing animals whatever i'm i'm just in a confusion i don't even know how to express this question how does this end i you know the the pets normally follow the master so whatever the master's state of consciousness is the pets follow that whatever the habits the master has the pets follow that mm -hmm. so you can communicate with the cat saying that uh, i don't want to kill any living beings and uh, cooperate with me because we both are living in the same space help me support me like that you can intuitively you can put an intent and speak speak to the animals they respond they normally respond i have seen many vegetarian cats where the the cats have been eating meat and since they have come into meditation and the cats slowly started eating fruits and other vegetarian food the the pets normally follow the master so it's not a big thing okay i okay. i tried experiment with experimenting with my dog i wouldn't say the issue the the other thing is the family they notice right so they are like you can do whatever with you they don't understand the whole whole concept as the background they're like you can do whatever experiments with yourself and they've moved gradually ahead in at least this part but do not experiment with them because they need meat <laughs> you got the answer yeah don't when you know something is right don't listen to others follow your heart okay when the master changes the pets also changes as simple as that you can start communicating with the pet consciously it will change and there are a lot of alters see there are certain instincts uh, which you cannot which the animals will slowly change it will take its own time it may not change immediately but it will definitely change you do your best or whenever you are feeding the cat you put this intent very strongly while feeding the cat the cat will change okay do it as a do it as an experiment do it as an experiment you will see the magic thank you so much sir yeah thank you so before you go you share your retreat experience what significant shift happened to you in the retreat sure so uh i did the retreat in december and after the retreat there were three things that you had always mentioned on a daily basis that you need to practice which is weekly once mona journaling on a daily basis reading book on a daily basis that somehow just fit into my head completely i've been uh, without fail practicing mona on a weekly basis a few times it's a hybrid mona when i say hybrid is because if if there is a work requirement i'm focusing only on the work i close it off but somehow automatically i realized that uh, even when there is a confusion all of a sudden when i wake up or all of a sudden i feel no today is mona day and when I, it's a mona day i completely withdraw into myself it's so beautiful just not to speak at all you know and the next day you realize you've conserved so much energy as anaga ji mentioned these days i look forward to the mona day because the mona day after the mona day i'm very energetic there are days when i don't get sleep and during those mona days i feel very energetic uh reading books has become so many times i shifted to the end of the day but i've decided whatever it is till the night uh, does not i mean till i do not finish that i will not sleep so i do read a few pages i have without fail journaled on a daily basis and that's greatly helped shifted my consciousness 
to a next level especially practice of mona the beauty of mona is something i would say is just another level so thank you i i'm i'm attending the uh, ashram again or rather i'm visiting the ashram again in may i've spoken uh, for about 3 days and thankfully it just falls about the amavasya retreat at that time so i'll be going there for 3 days there in the month of may there is pournami retreat uh so it's from uh uh 6th 7th and 8th so i i thought did you book your tickets to... already uh, yeah i did i spoken to uh, swanishri ma'am also okay so we are celebrating buddha purnima for 5 days there will be music live music and uh, there will be workshops and there will be kind, it, some kind of celebration as well buddha purnima okay, i don't know which sorry which day you can call furnishri madam and she will let you okay right? so okay. the dates i think uh, it starts let me check quickly uh, the dates are i think 21st to 25th may 21st to 25th so you have three days of silence and two days of celebration okay all right thank you thank you sir namaste sir namaste, thank you madam. so much for sharing the wisdom So I have two questions. Uh, one, I am from the US. Are you going to have any retreats in the US? Not yet planned for this year. Yeah, yeah. this year it will be in India, and uh, yeah, US not yet planned this year. Maybe okay. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Next year. Okay. Yeah, that will be great, sir. and there is a mega meditation summit a summits happening there was one in dallas last year there will be one in in the city where i live here uh, this year uh, so uh, do you have any plans to come it's in august no no we have other plans august uh, i'm planning the uh, august first week i'm planning a trip to ladakh and then okay. uh, september planning a trip to egypt so my schedule is little engaged on this part of the world yeah i would love normally, to attend normally i am not interested in this uh, summits and other things my approach is more of transformation my approach is more of retreats where people experience the shift in the consciousness where people experience mauna uh, people experience the detox process where people experience their own inner bliss so most of the time i do programs which really help the people to experience their own inner potential and uh, i don't uh, even though i do get invitations to participate in this kind of programs uh, i said yeah. what is the point of going for half an hour and teaching meditation and things like that so my focus yes. is more on uh, retreats travels spiritual awakenings something like that yes thanks for the invitation i would uh, come us was not calling actually us was not <laughs> i i did visit us uh, i think two three times i visited us two three times uh, but i yeah. feel my work is more in uh, europe and asia but uh, why not yes i will come i'll come next year that will be great sir thank you now i joined the whatsapp group i know that where the retreats will be i'll try to uh, make to the retreat maybe in india some day if you won't be able to come to the us yes ma'am thank you so much sir i have one question like you told that uh, soul has colors is it possible that like we, the soul changes color on uh, in one lifetime on daily basis also because sometimes while meditating we uh, i had an experience of a golden soul sometimes it's blue and sometimes it's rainbow yeah what you are saying is more of aura right aura like you know when you have positive emotions when you have positive moods then the colors are your your aura is complete there is no breaks in your aura there is no holes in your aura uh, and when you are very stressed then your aura is broken so when i said uh, varna varna determines the age of the soul for example uh, a very old soul will have a purple color vibrant purple color i'm just giving an example 
Okay, so the color of the purple symbolizes the Sahasrara Chakra, the person who is detached, the person who has a lot of wisdom. But for a young soul or a baby soul, they will have a purple color definitely within them, but it is not vibrant, it is not dominant. They have other colors dominant. Okay, so the answer for your question is yes, when you take photographs, there are photographs which measure your aura, which can take the auric photographs. So when you are in a happy space, you took the photograph, then your aura is multicolored, but unbroken. But when you are stressed, you take an auric photograph, then still it is multicolored, but it is broken. And the domination of the colors determines which uh, evolution you are in, what kind of an evolution you are in. Okay. So it's very simple. Your question is like, does it changes on a day-to-day -day basis? It will change on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, you have taken shower and immediately after shower you've taken, you have your real aura color. But if you go to a marketplace, you are bombarded with so many energies. You know, that's not your, your auras are a little distort, distorted. You know, that's not your real. So whenever you sit in meditation, your original aura comes into the place. Or whenever you take shower, your original aura comes into the place. Or whenever you take a fire bath, you, know, you are in coma, or you are in, in the presence of the fire, then your original aura comes into the place. When you are in the forest, then your original aura comes into the place. So your aura does keep changing. Okay. But the soul aura is different. The soul aura takes lifetimes to build up. Like, sir, uh, when we meditate, we see like a flame like thing uh, when uh, even the eyes are closed. What is it? Like, it is the aura which we are seeing. No, it's a third eye activation. When you close your eyes and you are seeing a flame, that relates to a third eye. It's not the aura. And the color of the flame is uh, different at uh, different uh, situations, uh, different uh, times. It, it is possible. In the beginning, you will not see the clear image. Later on, you will have more clarity. Right? Simple Thank understanding, you. madam. Your aura relates to your soul. As simple as that. Your soul is happy. You have a vibrant aura. You are not happy. Your aura is not vibrant. Okay. So, instead of focusing on the colors, it's important you focus on how you feel. Okay. If Before taking any important decisions, you have to be in a vibrant space. Then you can take important decisions. If you are emotionally in a turmoil, then go take a quick shower. Then after that, you will take the right decisions. In your emotional space, in your emotional space, you are not in a comfortable, balanced emotion, then every decision you take will be a wrong decision. So better to meditate for some time, then you can take the right decision. Or, or take a shower, or be in the nature, or spend one day in Mauna, and then take important decisions in life then that will be the right decision for your soul evolution. Okay. Thank you. So we, we are more concerned about the practical approach. We are more concerned about how spirituality is going to help us. So that is our focus. Okay.
बहुत सुंदर सर बहुत सुंदर बहुत मेहनत किया है आपने इस आश्रम को बनाने के लिए बहुत ही सुंदर या सो दैट्स द वीडियो व्हिच व्हिच वर रिलीज्ड येस्टरडे इट गिव्स अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ अ फैसिलिटीज ऑफ द आश्रम एंड अ काइंड ऑफ अ व्यू सो नाउ इन दिस आश्रम एवरी मंथ ऑन अमावस्या फॉर 3 डेज and full moon for 5 days there's a free retreats happening everything is free accommodation is free food is free everything is free the whole year it happens from the month of february till the month of september all free retreats two times a day so anybody can visit and avail this facility and october from october november december january in this four months we will be doing a intense retreats more of 10 days retreats okay so 10 days and 14 days retreats and these intense retreats has a detox element as well and it will be there will be a strict mauna and there will be mindfulness and uh, so a lot of things will be integrated and the food will be more of juice based fruits based organic diet and uh, so a lot of things lot of efforts goes into that 10 days retreat things uh, some of you have attended so those retreats are not paid retreats it's donation based retreats where uh, there is a certain cost to be incurred no matter that retreat uh, even though it is uh, a donation based one it is still you can claim tax benefits atg tax benefits you can claim so this year i am doing this in uh, december during christmas time and i make sure that i keep the numbers to 22 only 22 participants first come first serve basis and uh, the one thing which i would like to share today is not to be it's not a surprise but what i would like to share is in the past we did uh, something like you know not an intense retreat but a five days gathering where there will be a lot of wisdom session and there will be some fun and gala and dance and of course meditation so we will plan one such event and that will be in october okay and uh, the exact dates of the retreats we will announce it in the group but all i would say is come to this ashram it's not commercialized It is maintained in, a, in its own purity. That see, if you these kind of uh, retreats are very very important for you. There's one thing I would like to uh, rather encourage people to invest in yourself because people think in terms of money, right? Oh, this retreat costs so much. Why should I pay for this retreat? this is an investment on yourself because you are getting a certain facilities where you have an opportunity to stay alone in your room and you have all the food served and you are taken care and then you go through a certain detox and it's really worth investing in your own self because this investment you take it this experience you take it lifetimes to lifetimes it helps to graduate your, your soul shifts its consciousness to a higher degree and then this experiences you take back when you go to higher worlds but if you are investing money in property in gold and this and that that will be useful only when you are as long as you are here but more than that it's not useful some people they are really funny they are happy to buy a 50000 silk saree they are happy to pay 1 lakh rent they are happy to pay 10 lakhs to buy a car okay they are happy to go for a 2 lakhs holiday trip but to donate to an ashram in return they get a retreat in in uh, the, to get a retreat in return which benefits their soul they think about money no 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 itna jyada paise kyu spirituality should be free no why they are charging money 
you run an ashram you will know how what it makes to run an ashram right it is based on the philanthropic support the ashram is run somebody has to pay the money somebody has to pay the money for the board somebody has to pay the money for the electricity the government doesn't give electricity for free the employees doesn't work for free right everything costs money the people who work there the workers the cement the sand the rocks the materials the steel everything costs money but we are making it in a in a way that it is not commercialized commercialized means only when you pay money you are allowed that is commercialization like you go to a cinema theater a movie theater you no know, only when you pay you get the ticket or you go to a restaurant only when you pay you are served the food that is commercial but in we made it in the ashram like a non commercial because that is our indian ethics where spirituality is served to everybody and the people who can afford they should support in return but the mindset of the people is somebody is taking care somebody is donating we need to get everything for free see one thing you need to remember that everything is a two way if you get something and you don't contribute back you have to take one more lifetime because it adds as a it adds in your runa you know it's called runa so we are not making we are not asking you to give away all your property but whatever you feel in your heart you should feel in your heart that is most important thing you should feel in your heart that i have benefited from this place and this benefit should carry on to other people also so for that what can i do so you give it from your heart space based on what you feel like so that is a donation ultimately that is a, a donation is something which which you feel in your heart and you do it out of your heart space so never never think in terms of money never think in terms of business whenever you are visiting any spiritual organization whenever you are visiting any ashram when somebody is doing service unconditionally there never in, think in terms of money okay so this education is really needed and uh, we have we have made it even the paid retreats you know it's a donation basis it doesn't go to the any individual it goes to ashram account it goes to the trust even for the paid retreats we have a policy that if you cannot afford to pay but you really want to come you can come we are not going to say no you really want to come your soul is guided to come you come you donate how much you can afford so we are very clear about it any sincere seeker this agati ashram will never say no even for the paid retreats this ashram will never say as long as you are sincere right so this understanding is very important and uh, from february till september you have all free retreats donation basis which is like 5 days and 3 days only october november december january we have a specialized program and the program needs a, a certain structure because it's a 10 days program and it goes through a, a lot of uh, work gets into that retreat so you can choose which one you want um my suggestion is if you are uh, if you are just traveling to south india if you are traveling that area you want to have a look do visit that place and you will really fall in love with that place and my suggestion would be you need to have the experience of the retreat because the when you attend the retreat you will experience yourself this is the key that's why we call it as a self realization retreat self healing retreat self mastery retreats once you need to attend at least in your life once you need to attend and also the beauty is you will uh, meet all the fellow seekers so there's there's a good friendship possibility of good friendship there you sitting at home it's difficult to make friendships but when you participate in this kind of retreats you can make a lot of good friendships and uh, this kind of ashrams where there is such purity maintained where it is not commercialized uh, that is a place to offer your service also where you feel lot of joy in giving this service and uh, yes uh, we are planning a trip in uh, we are planning a trip to ladakh because there were few vietnamese students who were requesting me for the last before since before covid they were asking why don't you take us to himalayas we want to come only with you to himalayas to ladakh so i said okay fine i'll take this time 
right? I'm taking only 30 people. So I said, Indian, both Indians and uh, Vietnamese will come. And uh, only 30 seats are there. Uh, we will announce in the group who to contact. You can, primarily, you can give your interest in that WhatsApp group, that Pratik Vijay WhatsApp group, you can give an interest. Or you can send an interest to Netaji also. Of course, this Ladakh program is not a, a service. Okay, let's be very clear. This Ladakh program, we are going through a travel agent. So you have to pay the travel agent. And uh, I think we have tried to put a minimum organizing cost. And see, the, the retreat cost, the 10 days retreat costs are 45,000 standard. So the 45,000 goes as a donation to the ashram. And you get ATG tax benefit in return. Everything is transparent. So for this Ladakh, it's an eight days program where you arrive on your own. You arrive on your own to lay. That means you can come by bus or you can come by flight. It's your choice. So from the time you land in the airport and till the time you go back to the airport. So this uh, tour operators, they will take care. So it's a seven nights, eight days trip. And uh, we will be, of course, we'll be doing some meditations there and we'll be enjoying trekking and we'll have a, a sightseeing also. And uh, so, yeah, the price, including the organizing cost and everything, it is 38,000 for eight days. So that you pay for your own entertainment, your own enjoyment, your own travel. Okay, so this is not a donation. So these are the two programs we have lined up. And then there's one more coming in September, which is uh, an Egypt trip. We're going to Egypt and uh, meditate in the King's Chamber in Egypt. That is in September. And uh, I'll let you know the dates and the prices. And uh, yes, uh, all these trips like Ladakh and Egypt, it's organized by the travel agents, but we are going as a group. So I will also be there to oversee the meditation and things like that. Don't miss this kind of trips, I would say, because um, if you, you can book online and go by yourself, but you will not have this company of uh, Sajjana Sangati, you, you will not have this company of these truth seekers going together. And these trips are more of soul enjoyment. When a group of people with same frequency, like-minded people, when you go, then there is a lot of enjoyment from the soul level also. You can you can cut down all the other expenditure, but when it comes to spiritual trips, spiritual travels, do utilize it because that gives a kick to the soul. The soul is seeking adventure. That is the nature of the soul. And I am not doing it as a business. I'm doing it because I promised the Vietnamese that I'll take them to Ladakh. So I'm doing that Ladakh trip. And uh, Egypt also people are asking. So I also need entertainment, right? I also need adventure. So I also want your friendship. So for me, it's also a great joy to travel with you, to spend more time with you, to have friendship with you. And while we are sitting on the uh, sitting on the rocks or while we are having a casual time, that's where you can have this uh, Sanjana Sangatyam. So it's all fun. I also need that fun. So I'm doing it for myself. Okay? So don't think I'm doing a great service or don't think I'm doing business. I'm not doing either. When it comes to money, it is very, very important to understand that money is an energy. Money is simply an energy. So when you when you spend people, when they are happy to spend for others, but it is difficult to spend for themselves. Some people, they, they have this resistance. I can spend for my husband. I can spend for my children. I can spend for my wife. I can spend for my parents. But to spend for themselves, they find it difficult. No, no, I'm not that person. That is a lack of self-love. When you when you gift yourself this kind of retreats and holidays and trips, then yes, you are uh, you are heading in the self-love direction of the self. -love. That is actually self-love is that you take care of yourself, you you gift yourself, you hold yourself dear. So this is self-love. All right. So before we finalize this uh, program, it is very important that. We understand the nature of the soul. And every time you remember the nature of the soul, then you know how to you know, uh, make yourself self-motivated and keep moving in life. Life is simply a drama. Okay, Enjoy the drama. That is the ultimate goal of life. And do your dharma. Only your dharma will help you towards your moksha. Moksha is synonymous with detachment. 
moksha is synonymous with liberation okay so moksha is synonymous with celebration so moksha is synonymous with detachment moksha is synonymous with freedom 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 is the very very important quality and once you are able to uh, you know honor your own soul's freedom then you are no more in bandha you are in moksha so the more you do your dharma again when it comes to dharma swadharma paradharma swadharma means simple meditation do meditation you have this principle in your life that when i get up every day when i get up from my bed i will do meditation i will do my swadharma first then only the rest of the things will happen every day when i get up from the bed i will meditate half an hour one hour whatever the time permits i will do my swadharma first when you do this swadharma first this swadharma will help you to see what is your parada what you have to do what you have to do to your family what you have to do to your society what you have to do to the whole of the planet earth and how to respond in any given challenging situation how to deal with it how to respond it this swadharma will take care of the parada so swadharma is only two things meditation and number 2 taking care of your body taking care of your body is your swadharma also so you begin with swadharma every day you begin with meditation then naturally all the rest of the things will fall in order okay and it's very natural to go up up and downs in life and at any given point of time you are feeling low immediately read a spiritual book just for 15 minutes 20 minutes read a spiritual book immediately meditate for 15 20 minutes then naturally you come you pull yourself out you pull yourself out from all your low phases okay so reading spiritual book and uh, meditating every day and to be in part of this sangha spiritual sangha this is very very important these are the practical things which will help you in your day to day life there are many spiritual concepts where uh, you know it goes into this is the mind and this is this and this is body and etheric body aura these that blah 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 all those things are good everything is good for your intellectual understanding everything is good but when it comes to practical when it comes to practical implementation see we are concerned about what is the practical benefit at the end of the day how it transformed your life how it is helping your life practically that matters so which helps you practically is the practice of meditation will help you practically reading books will help you practically to be part of the sangha will help you practically you should be in a you should give your listening ears you should listen to others experiences that motivates you this sajjana sangathyam is very very important very 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 important sajjana sangathyam sajjana sangathyam means you are listening to other Uh, meditators experience other meditators transformational experiences not cock and bull stories okay i got this vision i got this dream i got this i got that i read this book i no you you have to share your transformational experience that is real sajjana sangathya you listen to others transformational experiences you you have to learn from others experiments okay theoretical information doesn't help you practically only practical knowledge helps you practically so these are the very basic simple things if you catch all of these things then you are on the formula 1 track you become unstoppable right meditation reading books sajjana sangathyam and i would add service seva focus on service the more you do service the more naturally your soul rejoices and the more the more you do service more your karmic baggage reduces the more you do service the more your own karmic baggage from many many lifetimes reduces and uh, service also gives you a very natural joy to the soul and uh, yes it's an invitation to visit the ashram the ashram belongs to everybody it's a it's a meditation ashram and this ashram is is an international center for mauna dhyana come any time you come and to meditate and practice mauna and enjoy the nature it's an invitation for all of you we have built this ashram for seekers like you to come and ex- experience and do your all the experiments there okay so make it like your 
holiday home. Make it like a holiday home. And we have free accommodations also there. Okay, so you don't need to worry about expenditure. You come, enjoy, and then you do what you want to do. And uh, yeah, we have uh, Meenakshit ji also. She hasn't uh, spoken. Uh, yes, Meenakshit ji, you have attended a few retreats and you have yes, uh, also sir. helped organize few retreats. Yes, uh, sir. So would you like to share your own uh, experience of coming into meditation and how it has transformed your message for the audience? Yeah, so, um, sir, my experience in meditation, uh, it's been a long association in terms of I've been meditating uh, from a long time, but the reality of it has only hit me after I think I have been in touch with you, attended your retreats, and uh, how it has, those 10 days retreats have deepened, it has opened some dimension which I had never access to. And it also seems to have lost out in our day-to-day -day life. Um, I think one is that. And second is the awareness in day-to-day -day living. Now, whenever one operates out of ego space, I get to know, oh, this is where I need to work on. So good, it's coming up so that I need to work on it and then it'll go away. So that has been uh, actually all the learning points that you have given. There's something about, sir, the way you say, uh, it's not new, but uh, the clarity or the presence that you bring, uh, we all start doing it somehow. You say clean, okay, we start cleaning. We, you say do this, there is there's something about it we kind of follow uh, and it touches our heart. So... Uh, and I would also like to thank you for giving these nine days to us. Personally, it has been a rekindling experience for me. Uh, somewhere I thought I had gone a little down and out and all that. And it has been really a rekindling experience. And on behalf of everyone, I would like to thank you so much. Uh, you have been really an instrument in transforming so many people's lives. And we hope to see you again and also in person. <laughs> Would love to attend some more retreats. Yes. So thank you. Thanks for sharing. And uh, yeah, I would like to be in uh, connect with all of you through the Sunday programs. So it will be telecasted live in YouTube, uh, Pradeep Vijay Spiritual Talks YouTube channel. And you can ask any question which relates to your uh, spiritual evolution. And any questions, any clarifications, any fine tuning, you're always welcome to come and ask your questions there. And uh, yes, we will do more uh, sequence, especially in English language. So we will do more sequences once I finish my travel and uh, we'll be in touch. So thank you very much, Anita Ji, for this uh, beautiful collaboration. And uh, I know that you are doing an amazing service, reaching out to uh, Hindi speaking uh, people, especially because I'm not a fluent speaker of uh, Hindi. And through you, it has reached out to many Hindi-speaking people. Then you are.